uh, when did you go to Ten Mile Inn and why did you go to Ten Mile Inn? Well, we were, um, we arrived in the liberated areas and they said we wanted to, we wanted to make a study of land reform and they said, well, the land reform is going to start in, in this particular part of the country. So they said, you, you'll go to Ten Mile Inn, so why don't you go and live there and get to know the people and, and have them know you so that you don't cause a sort of a sensation. They just take you for granted. So that's why we went and, and uh, lived in that village and went visiting all go? the different families and getting acquainted, let the kids come and, you know, they liked to, they liked my typewriter. They liked to see children. me typing. <laughs> the children of the village? Yeah. Who did you go to Ten Mile Inn with? Who were David. You with? David, anybody and else? Yes, uh, we had a Chinese companion, a very nice one. He was a school teacher, uh, Li Di Hua. Li Di Hua. Yeah. And, yes, we, were, we wanted to see what the model, how the party did it, yeah. and we found out something very important, yeah. and that's from the masses to the masses. So that's a Chinese slogan that we had never heard of before. Can you that explain? means that the, the communists go into this village, yeah. and they're not saying we're going to carry out land reform here. They go into the village and find out what they're most worried about, yeah. what most concerned about, and then they take that and some of the leaders of the village and, and then some of our group, they discuss together how, would, how should we handle this. Yeah. And because they are the ones going to carrying it out, they're full of ideas of how you could do it. Yeah. And, the, and we are the ones that sort of know the theory of how you will carry out a movement. You, you knew the theory? Our, our, the, we're representing David. the Chinese party. Yeah. And the Chinese party knows they want to do it from the masses to the masses. The communists knew that if they sponsored these people to take over the land, then after the PLA had left, mm -hmm. the landlords would just seize it back. Uh -huh. So the these poor farmers had to fight the landlords themselves right then and there, yeah. not, not leaving them a whole, you know, in the background, so that they really have won the land from the landlords and the landlords are not able to dislodge them. See, it's very, I think they had experience earlier when they just helped the, uh, the local poor people to throw, overthrow the landlord and take the land and then they passed on to their next place and the landlords just came back. And did the back. landlords, did they, they would have resisted the giving up their land? Of course, but how could they resist when they, the whole mass is the whole, all the, everybody, I mean, who are they? They're a small group. Yeah. And the tenants are a big group. That's a meeting. A meeting. They always have mouse pictures. Up. So what, what would happen in a meeting? Well, they'd call up the landlord to stand. If this is a struggle meeting, yeah. there are many different meetings, but at a struggle meeting, they take the landlord, they have him stand on the platform and have the masses expose his, they're telling me, you, you know, you uh, uh, took away our land and you did it for this or that. And another thing, and you, took my son and made him a, 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 a not a serf, a hire, you know, made him work for you with very low pay. You know, they take all the different things the landlord might have done against them. And, and uh, the important thing is for them to be confident because they can't the go up there and say, hey, you, you, you did a bad thing, you know, they have to so that's one of the things that the party has to do, mm. to, to make the poor peasants feel that they have power, because yep. they're not accustomed to power. So it's very hard for them to stand up before a landlord, they are accustomed to the landlord. Yeah. <laughs>
thrilling thing, well, for the women, yes. is that before everything was decided by men, the women never went out to meetings or had a vote or anything. Yeah. That was all in the hands of the men. But when the communists came, then they, and the women don't want to go and sit with men. Yeah. They always, they keep, they sit separately whenever they go around. They don't sit all mixed sex. And they're always busy because they never just sit resting. So they have a little kid at their knee or playing around or they would do spinning. Before you said, the big thing about the meetings is that the peasants for the first time could speak out and go uh -huh. against the landlord. Uh -huh. Did the women speak out as well? Well, it took time to get them to be, you know, to feel strong enough to just yeah. get up and say what they want. And that's why a lot of the meetings uh, at the beginning were special meetings just of the women. Yeah. Now, why has that man got a white tag on He's his He's a life? landlord, that he is officially recognized as a landlord. He's just going to be out of society. He doesn't take part in the meeting. Oh, he does. He, he can go to meetings. Oh, that's a meeting, and that's the that's the uh, village head. Yeah. And this is the village treasurer. Yeah. And this is a member of the land reform team. So you had a village head and a village treasurer. Were they once peasants? They uh, they were chosen by the villagers. Yeah. They thought this was the, the most able and fair man, so they, so he's head of the village. Did, did he have the skills to head a village? Well, that's why they elected him. But did he, was he a peasant, have a peasant background or? Oh yes, yeah, that's uh, So then he wouldn't But he's, a, he's a, a middle peasant, that's oh, a, okay. yeah. And this was a really great choice. He was a very able man. Yeah. His name was Wang. Wang. And he was the treasurer. Was he a good treasurer? Yes. Now, treasurer, they deal with money. Yeah. I mean, would this be one of the first times he was dealing with money? No, no. Oh. Because, you know, even in that society, you're always, there are always people that have to deal with money. Okay. Yeah. They, they were making a, an, a list of what each person, what each family owned. Uh -huh. They had to say, I have, you know, these plots here, and up the hill I have some more plots. The official survey was not accurate because the rich people could, you know, sort of cover up this or that. And Would they also take into account people's debts? Yes, so yes. You'd write down your debt? Yes. Oh yes, they are measuring the land. So tell me what. And, well, David made a, a study. Yeah. It's immensely difficult, but they know how to do it. Yeah. You see, the land is not all even, yeah. so the the uh, fields are not any old space because it's uneven land. So they had to measure it in such a way that you know how much was covered, even if it was irregular. And yep. that's what they have this, oh, this so was a whites. very clever. We, David and I were immensely impressed yeah. with how they could measure land that was so uneven. Different people were assigned so much land. I mean, yep. they'd have their, uh, what they already own, and then what might be added to or what, so you'd taken, or what might be taken away after the land reform. Yep. And then there's the question of all the property of oh. these landlords. A lot of these things you see were taken from the landlords. Things like quilts yeah. or things that the poor needed. Peasants were issued with okay. things according to their needs. So the poorest peasant would have the most of these things that were not money, but they were amounts. Yeah. So you would type up everything you saw that day? Yes. Mm -hmm. What was, would be your focus that you would 
right down? Well, I, in general, I took very full notes. I just keep records. That's my specialty. Have you kept all those notes? Yeah, I've got all those notes. 